Hello everybody and welcome back to Vintage Thursday. So today, as you can see, we are with the 3095 and it is time to do another job uh, onto the tractor. So what we're gonna do today, we are going to fit a battery isolator switch uh, into the battery line so that when that is off, everything is dead. There's no chance of any kind of short circuit or battery drain or anything happening. 3000s are now either over or approaching 30 years old. Uh, and these tractors are known or are prone to electrical issues. So it seems a sensible thing to do. Um, firstly, to preserve battery life, uh, you know, to make sure that it's always got power when you come to start it. Uh, but more importantly, to stop those electrical potential short circuits, causing issues and potential fires. We don't want any of that. So this is what we've got. It's a, just a simple switch. It will go into the negative line of the battery. So let's take the panels off. Uh, see what we're going to do. So the battery on 3000 is in the front behind the grill uh, in front of the radiators and below the air cleaner so that's where it sits and this one <coughs> is earthed you can see I you know the battery is always disconnected on this one <coughs> and it is earthed through a mounting bolt of the front nose surround. Now you can see in there it's not pretty it is rusty okay so this tray that the battery sits on is rusty there is some holes in it underneath the battery and the hole of the front end is just a little bit corroded now this tractor like a lot of others does suffer from some electrical issues which is why you've not seen it doing any work yet I haven't got to the bottom of it a lot of those electrical problems are down to either a bad earth or a poor connection and I have found some bad connections underneath the cab on the autotronic box. Uh, I've changed those, they were corroded, but we still haven't got to the bottom of the problem yet. So what I wanna do, part of, so partly today's, uh, so partly fitting this switch is for safety reasons. The second part is I wanna get away from earthing at the front here to try and improve or minimize the fact that this corrosion could be causing any problems. So we're gonna remove the earth strap from here, put it somewhere different, and then in time, uh, this whole front end needs to need to clean out. This plate is going to have to be remade, but that's a job for another day. So I've been thinking for a little while where is the most sensible place to install this switch. So the first obvious place I thought, uh, let's put it this side of the engine. So when you come on start up, you check your oil, and then you just turn your switch on, and you're ready to go. Um, which is fine for starting up, but it's the wrong side for getting out and it is highly likely you're going to forget to turn it off. We've discounted putting it on that side. So I want to mount the switch somewhere uh, below the bonnet line or the, the panel line, but kind of protected by it. So I think the best thing we can do, what we do, we'll make a bracket to come off of these two bolts here, just to bring the switch kind of here somewhere. And then the wires can run behind, plenty of space. Um, it will be below, it won't be hidden by the panels, but it will, should, keep the worst of the weather off of it and still be easy to catch hold of.
Right, so it would seem our second cut with the plasma cutter caused a sound failure. But anyway, we've got our bracket now. So there we go. Big hole at the top is for the isolator and the two holes pick up the bolts. So let's see if it fits. Oh, well the holes line up. Right, well that seems to work. It's not vertical, but it never was going to be. Um, I don't think that matters. So we might get lucky and be able to install the, the switch without taking it off again. Spanner. Right, so assume that's on and that's off. Um, the switch does move in slightly, so I guess that's making a contact and that's not. So, right, let's make some cables. I'll just screw that on temporarily, but I, we may have to end up taking it off when we're putting the terminals on, but we'll see. I like that. Right, so the switch is kind of centrally mounted between the battery back here. So we can run the cable, we've got a spare hole in that clamp, steering pipe clamp I think that is. Okay, we've got a spare hole in there, I can run under underneath the radiator along here, hopefully we can poke it through there somewhere to that terminal and then we come off this side, we're going to come to one of these mounting bolts here. So now we can get that nice and clean, we're getting away from the rust at the front. So we'll have a bit of emery tape, get a good clean surface. Right, so we're going to be using these crimp on connectors for our new cable. So we've got a 12 millimeter hole, one for the chassis and the back of the switch takes 10 millimeter. So we have to crimp those on so we get to use our new favourite workshop tool which is a hydraulic crimper. So let's get a cable made up and we can put our new ends on. So the first thing we need to do is strip off enough of the insulation. Okay, and then we take the terminal, make sure all the strands are in, fits nicely. This is easier if you can grow an extra hand, all I often do is clap this in a vise and then it's held. But we haven't got a vise here, so we need to hold it. Hold it tight onto the... And make sure it's end of the cable is pushed in as far as it will go. Pump the handle. And then just pump and pump until it meets. Once the dies meet, it's tight. And there we go. A nice tidy, firm 
proper looking job. Right, so there's our new earth, so that's nice and firm. Should have tucked it behind the pipe, shouldn't I? Right, so now we'll find our length for our next fit in, which goes to the back of here. There we go, plenty of long enough, and then we'll just use a 10 millimeter eye. Same again. end up taking our switch off just to get them tight but that'll do for now he sits in there nicely right Let's feed the other cable back through which we've got our battery cable now threaded threaded through clamped on what we'll do we'll put it on so we get it in the right way around then we'll take the switch out pull it out so it's easy to get them done up properly Perfect. Right, it'll be nice to put a clamp on here, but there's nowhere to fix it, and it's not going to flap loose. So it doesn't really need it. And we'll just pull back this bit of slack, make sure it's out the way of the fan. Right, so we've got our cable routed through underneath the radiator, up through this. So this is just a spare hole in a clamp, a rubber clamp, so it's going to be held nice and tight. So we'll just re-tighten the bolt. Right, so there was our cable clamped. So first thing we'll do up here, we will get rid of the old earth lead. Hopefully we can do it with the battery in there. I'm not sure if we will or not. Right, I'm gonna have to take the battery out from the far side. Right, but now that the battery's out of the way, you can see the state of the battery tray in here. So this all needs to be replaced. So this is kind of, this is what happens in battery, you know, it's the, the vapors, the gases can, that come off of batteries causes corrosion, which is why I want to get away from earth in here. And hopefully where we are now on that bell housing bolt, we should be a nice clean earth. But anyway, yeah, this is a job for the future. Tidy up in here. So now that's out of the way, we can bring the battery back in to uh, work out the length of our cable. Right, so this is the point where we uh, have to explain something. So this, th so a 3095 should have two batteries on it, um, two slightly smaller batteries than is on there. That combined, it's still 12 volt, but it gives you more cranking amps to get the six-cylinder engine started. That is a new battery, and it does start the tractor well, but it only came in April. We've not had any cold weather. If when the winter comes, if we use it, if we use it, um, and it turns out it needs two batteries. What we're going to do we're going to use bolt on terminals so that it makes it easier in the future to bolt a short length of cable to join to put two batteries in there so we're all tight we should be ready for a start turn the isolator on now we should start There we go, we are now completed. Um, looks a nice tidy job. Just got to learn now to remember on and off every time, or off every time we get off. Um, yeah, but I think the thing that makes it, it's that hydraulic crimper, makes it so, such a tidy job. Um, and that's not expensive, I think it was 25 quid on eBay or something. And the fittings come in different sizes. So the cable we have used is 50 square millimeter battery cable, so it's quite big. Um, and then the fittings 
and this is the fittings we got so we used so you get the fittings to match the cable size and we've used 12 mil holes onto the casting the tens were onto the back of the switch and then the eights were the ones that we put onto the battery terminal so it's all available not expensive and does a very tidy job makes it look professional so yeah that's another step on the road of the 3095 there's still many 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 more to go um, because we do have electrical issues to sort out that will help it won't cure them but it will help so there we go right i will say thank you very much for watching and we'll see you next time